And I think we might just be close to live. Alrighty. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I hope so. Welcome to the Troubadork non-commute show number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. I'll stop doing that. Um, if you got that reference, you're either a Beatles fan, a big nerd, or old, or all of the above. I am, of course, once again, coming to you. We tune because we like you. Coming to you from an undisclosed location right here in San Antonio, Texas. We have made some adjustments. I now have a more stable platform for this thing to rest on which is nice. Eventually, we might have, like, a mechanism or something. I can just scream just a tad more so that you don't get all of the light above. I've been turning it out, but I've decided not to this time just to see what happens. This is Earn While You Learn, after all. Yes, it's happening. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually an acapella piece. Um, it is one that has been requested. I take requests sometimes if I know the songs. Why does I have to learn them? Which I can do. This one was fairly easy because it was, in fact, a riff on a Gilbert and Sullivan song that I sang regularly at the Great Victorian Christmas Fair of Charles Dickens, London, once a long time ago, far off to the west, which is that way, roughly, in the wilds of uh, the wilds of California. All right. Let me see here. I've got it in like three different places, so I'm going to see if I can look it up. This is, in fact, um, to the tune of the Modern Major General. And if I'd thought about it, I would have put on a pith helmet, but I haven't gotten to the silly hats phase of this show yet. Yet. I'm almost certain silly hats will occur. Um, I'm not accompanying myself this time because I haven't quite gotten the chords down, but I do the patter pretty well. Bum, 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 bum. I am the very model of effective social distancing. I listen to the experts on the topic of resistancing. I know the brunch and yoga class aren't nearly as imperative as doing what I can to change the nation's viral narrative. I'm a tenor. It's a low part. I'm very well acquainted, too, with living solidarity and confident that everyone can do it temporarily. Go take a walk or ride a bike or dig into an unread book. Avoid the bars and restaurants and carry out or learn to cook. Avoid the bars and restaurants and carry out to learn to cook. Avoid the bars and restaurants. I wish I had a backup group. Restaurants and learn how to learn to learn to cook. There's lots of stuff to watch online while keeping safe from sinus ills. In this case, it's far better to enjoy your Netflix minus chills. Adopt a pet composer ballad, write some earnest dog girl. Wow, self reference too much. And help demolish Trump before our next event inaugural. It's going to be huge. Pandemics are alarming, but they are not insurmountable. If everybody pitches in to hold ourselves accountable. In short, please do your part to practice prudent coexistencing and being the very model of effective social distancing. That wasn't bad at all. I like that. That piece was written by... Eliza Rubenstein. It's been covered in a couple of different videos out there. I figured... Well, I might as well try, because it was fun, and it is fun. Um, this is kind of sort of a political show, but not really, because a lot of the politics is just, oh, for the love of, can we please just be like reasonable human beings, maybe? Um, you may have heard that there are some people who are ignoring the, hey, guys, let's try not to be contagious and carry this stupid COVID-19 virus all over the place. And unfortunately, some of them are in Florida because Florida, which ties in nicely to the next song I'm going to do, which is one that I wrote back when there was a 
Yes, it's this one. Back when there was a convention, I don't even know if it actually happened. It was supposed to happen in April, I think, which was for women. Women to go and learn how to be women, as taught by men, who are, of course, the perfect and total ultimate resource and experts on how women should be. And my friend Allie, who may watch this one day, hi, Allie, um, had uh, a story of her own, and she said something in the quote said uh, in a comment and said, "You don't have to. I don't have to tell you about mansplaining in Florida, because she had been vigorously mansplained to at a particular event in Florida, which then prompted me to well, write this song. Um, this song is inspired in its styling by one Pat McCurdy." And if you don't know who Pat McCurdy is, I would highly recommend that you check him out because Pat McCurdy is, he's up in the Great Lakes region, I think, and he plays bars and he writes a lot of original songs. And all of his songs have this wonderful quality to them wherein you hear it and you feel like you've, you've known it your entire life after you hear like the first half. And uh, I would love, love to be able to do that let me see. Those are the chords. Now let's see if I can do the song. I want to go mansplaining in Florida. I want to tell everyone that I'm the real victim here. I want to go mansplaining in Florida. I got to protest all these protests. Have I made myself clear? Oh, I hate being accused of hate crimes. And my victim blaming's got me in a hell of a mess. I've got to give them that idea some equal time. And the oppressors are the only ones that truly oppressed. I want to go mansplaining in Florida. I want to tell everybody I'm the real victim here. I want to go mansplaining in Florida. Got to protest all these protests. Have I made myself clear? It's rough being a white male. Some days I get up, I just don't feel like I can oppress the way I'm expected to. I got a problem being called problematic, and I can't sleep for all the crackers say that they're woke. I mean, didn't mean to mean what I might mean, and screw them if they cannot take a Schrodinger's joke. Schrodinger's joke is when you say something offensive, Look around to see if anyone was offended, and if they were offended, tell them you were kidding. I want to go mansplaining in Florida. I want to tell everyone that I'm the real victim here. I want to go mansplaining in Florida. Gotta protest all these protests, have I made myself clear? Conse consequence? <laughs> here we go. We're going to get there. Consequences make me feel persecuted And these mean old snowflakes hurt my fragile feelings so much And all your stupid logic cannot be refuted And I think the only folks I ain't pissed off so far The only folks I ain't pissed off so far are the Dutch They're very th thick-skinned I wanna go man playing in Florida I want to tell everyone that I'm the real victim here. I want to go mansplaining in Florida. I got to protest all these protests. Have I made myself clear? Ole. Or was that appropriation? I don't know. A mansplaining in Florida. I love the song. It's, it's, uh, it's a song that will probably annoy, as they like to say, all the right people. I'm being really insufferable about it, but that's okay. Um, the next song I want to do is a traditional song. I uh, love traditional songs for a couple of reasons, one of which is I really spent like my mid to late 20s and 30s and 40s being around traditional music, being performed by people at Renaissance festivals. Perhaps you've guessed that as much. Uh, this song <clears throat> is one that I heard initially from the Poxy Boggarts, the world famous Poxy Boggarts, during their longer than life period. Um, I believe the arrangement was done, or at least it was led by, uh, by my friend Tim, who was also 
and a member of the Sea Dogs for one gloriously musical uh, year. He had a fantastic character. He, he decided he was going to be the owner's idiot brother. There are holes on the side of the ship. Those are called portholes, sir. I don't care which side they're on. Fix them. It was glorious. Um, I'm going to try and do this. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, God willing, and the river don't rise, I will be able to do all of these lyrics without losing my tiny, tiny mind. Um, there's a bit of a challenge. Yeah, I think I can, I can see like half of the chord, half of the lyrics. I'm going to try it and we're going to see what happens. It's an F. I do a lot of stuff in F because that seems to be my key. I worry a lot about the fact that I do a lot of stuff that's F, G, and C. And then I remembered what Kinky Friedman said. He said, I love all of Tom T. Hall's songs. And both of his chord structures. As I was gone to Darby all on the market day, I spied the biggest ramsar that ever was fed on hay. Hey, ringle dangle, hey, ringle day. It was the biggest ram, sir, that ever was fed on hay. This ram was big behind, sir. This ram was big before. Before what? This ram was nine feet round, sir, if not a little more. Hey, ringle dangle, hey, ringle day. It was the biggest ram, sir, that ever was fed on hay. The horns upon this ram, sir, they reached up to the moon. A lad, a lad went up in April and didn't come down till June. A ringle dangle, a ringle day. It was the biggest ram, sir, that ever was fed on hay. The horns upon this ram, sir, they reached up to the sky. Actually, it was the fleece. Let's be honest about this. I wouldn't want to lie to you folks. The fleece upon this ram, sir, it reached up to the sky. The eagles build their nests there. You can hear the young ones cry. Hey, ringle dangle, hey, ringle day. It was the biggest ram, sir, that ever was fed on hay. The man who killed this ram, sir, was up to his knees in blood. The boy that held the basin was washed away in the flood. Hey, ringle dangle, hey, ringle day. It was the biggest ram, sir, that ever was fed on hay. Well, all the girls at Darby came begging for his ears to make him leather aprons to last him forty years. Hey, ringle dangle, hey, ringle day. It was the biggest ram, sir, that ever was fed on hay. And all the boys at Darby came begging for his eyes to kick around the streets far. They were football sized. Hey, ringle dangle, hey, ringle day. It was the biggest ram, sir, that ever was fed, sir, that ever was fed on hay. The man who owned this ram, sir, was counted very rich. The man that wrote the song, sir, was a lion, son of a hay, ringle dangle, hay, ringle. Day. It was the biggest ram, sir, that ever was fed on hay, ringle dangle, hay, ringle day, day. It was the biggest ram, sir, that ever was fed on hay. <laughs> yes. I'm still kind of getting that. The problem with it is, it's right there at when I heard it, it was a baritone, Tim, singing it. Or it was a baritone or baritone. A lot of people are baritoners, which is to say they have kind of the low part of my high and then the high part of the low. And my range hits the wall right down there. And now I got to sing like that. That's okay. We'll get there. We will get there. I feel like I should tell a story. And... Uh, I will tell a story, and it was a story, actually, that was during this particularly spectacular and glorious year in which Tim was a member of the Sea Dogs. And we did a lot more music, got very seriously into music, but we still maintained our level of complete idiocy in all other things. 
and one of those things was rounders. As I had mentioned in a previous, po- in a previous broadcast, um, rounders is a precursor to baseball. Instead of four bases, there were five. The uh, field was kind of in a diamond shape, shaped just like the home plate, and you went around it clockwise instead of counterclockwise. There were a few other rules here and there. You could be hit with the ball because it was basically a big wad of leather and wool, and if you got hit with it, you didn't die. But <clears throat> there was a competition between the Sea Dogs, who prided themselves on never winning a game, and St. Swithin's, which was the Peasants, who prided themselves on never winning a game. This was also the year that we had um, one of our one of our uh, our members had a, a girlfriend who was very good with crafts, and I had made this goofy idea of having Bosun Bob basically make a rag doll roughly the size of Roger Gaffron, our our guildmaster, who is not the tallest man in the world, and we could dress him up in sea dog clothing, and basically he'd be our stunt sea dog, so we could like you know throw him off the roof or throw him over the parapet or go staggering down the lanes with him. Here comes a parade. We go, ah, scatter into both directions. Bob just gets trampled to death by everything going through. Stuff like that. Well, um, Scratcher's girlfriend, who's a fascinating person. At the girlfriend at the time. At the time. Scratcher's not his current lady, but his lady at the time, who was a fascinating person, made Bosun Bob about 10 feet tall. Yeah, it's a big rag doll. And what happened is that after having this, we won't go into that right now, but there there are some details in this rag doll, which were also fascinating to think about. I didn't look for them. I didn't see them. I don't want to. Um, but uh, at one point, Bob was kidnapped by the members of St. Swithin's. They dragged Bob off to their compound. And a little while later, Bob was brought back um, in a mob cap and dress and chemise and bodice and a big additional pillow stuffed under the, the skirt and was uh, presented to us as Mistress Barbara, who apparently was in a family way by one of the sea dogs. And you can see this is not going to improve the longer this story goes, but this, this is the good part. Um, Barbara was joined by... Barbara joined St. Swithin's for the Rounders game. Now, again, both the Sea Dogs and the the Peasants pride themselves on never winning a single game. In the most, we lose the most spectacular and outlandish ways possible. And um, it was down to right about near the end of the the time when we were allowed to play this on the the jousting field before the horses and the guys with sticks came through. And uh, the Puritans, sorry, the the Peasants were were batting. And they were losing horribly. They were like beating each other with sticks and falling down and tripping over things. And it, but somehow, Barbara, Mistress Barbara, had scored and was on base. I want you to think about this for a moment. Somehow, a ten foot tall rag doll had scored a hit in rounders and had been dragged to first castle, as they say, with first base. Well, in a desperate effort to ensure that the Sea Dogs zero and everything uh, record was kept, two Sea Dogs picked up Barbara and ran her around the bases, scoring the single run for St. Swithin's, the Peasants Guild. Maintaining our pristine record of zero wins to every loss in the known universe. You can't make this stuff up, man. It just has to happen. You can't even plan it. This crap just kind of happens. And this is this is what I, I look forward to. This is what I long for sometimes. And this is one of the reasons why I appear to get along really well with the cast at, at Scarborough, because we're all of that same general level of insanity. One more song. One more song, and I will have effectively gone home. I am home now, but we're going home. We're going to do... I couldn't not do this one again, because this is just a fun song. And we wanted something bouncy. Uh, Darby Ram is kind of sparkly, but it goes goes that that down part where I basically burn out is... uh... I've also changed the lyrics just a little bit. We're tuning it, you know. Uh, The goal here now is to not play it too darn fast.
possums in a trench coat come to tea? They sit right at a table like you and me. Do they want another biscuit pair? Forgive them three, cause they're not really a guy. There's six possums in a trench coat. Maybe six, give them five more. Possums in a trench coat go to town. They got themselves an Uber, couldn't flag it down. The driver couldn't stop, no, he just kept on going, cause he didn't want to drive six possums in a trench coat. Possums in a trench coat see a show. Do you give them just one seat or the entire front row? Do the possums in the middle just peek out through the buttons? Man, I got so many questions for six possums in a trench coat. Possums in a trench coat on a date Got there 20 minutes early, couldn't stand to be late Everything turned out to go much better than expected Cause her day turned out to be six possums and six in a caftan Possums in a trench coat Possums in a trench coat Possums in a trench coat Six possums in a caftan So, yeah, possums. I still love possums in a trench coat. I'm working on some more songs. I am working on them. Um, the problem is sometimes I come up with the chorus and then I need to write verses, and sometimes I come up with the verses and I need to write a chorus. Dating a werewolf is kind of difficult because I've almost got an idea of where it's going to go, but not quite. But hey, you know, the longer this happens, the longer this goes on, the more likely I am to have a moment and just go, Poof! oh, that's what this song is supposed to sound like. <sighs> so I'd like to thank you all for listening to me once again, for joining me here. Because without you, this is literally a guy talking into what's effectively a very clever pile of rocks because that's what a computer is a computer is when we take a bunch of rocks and we fire some magic into it using electricity we teach it how to think sort of but it's not that bright so let's do our little credits reel here so first and foremost of course uh the adequate podcast podcast c will be coming out in a week from friday or saturday um, I'm putting it together. I'm coming up with things that I want to talk about. It'll be about 15, 20 minutes. It's the finest in short form podcasting. The Adequate Podcast can be found at anchor.fm slash the adequate or wherever you get your podcasts, including Spotify, because Spotify bought anchor.fm. And isn't it cool to see these kind of things in the background? We've got ourselves uh, my YouTube channel where all of the Troubadour shows wind up. They also wind up on Facebook, but you have to go to my page on Facebook fb.com slash the adequate then go to videos then you can see the then go to tobias's to matthew's videos as opposed to videos with matthew in them and then you can find them or you can just go to youtube.com slash mp laguerre and go to the troubadour playlist and they're all there um some of these are now none of them are monetized right now because i'm not that popular not that famous um i am getting notifications that i can't monetize some of them because they have songs that i'm covering and of course then there's like copyright stuff the folk songs not so much and the original stuff well if i ever sue myself over my own original stuff i will that'll be a sure sign of my continuing mental collapse got here the tip jar you can support adequacy in our lifetime if you have the money to do so and in these days i'm you know but in the event you like hit the lottery or something um patreon.com is the monthly subscription one dollar and up to adequacy in our lifetime. And the more of this I do, then the more new stuff I will put on and the more stuff I will put out just for the Patreon patrons, of which I currently have three. I have Brett. I have Laureen. Hi, Laureen. Hey, guys on the boat. I have John, the mighty Quigley Finch, who wrote Captain's Log, Sally Rover, and the Sudokan Song. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Uh, PayPal.me and Kofi.com both have the adequate. I was really startled that nobody took that. Someone had taken it, taken it for YouTube, however, which is why I'm still MP Laguerre there. Isn't that weird? It's weird. Carpe Diem Comics is, of course, the official emotional support comic shop for the Adequate Podcast, for the non-commute show, and for Tobias the Adequate in general. They're out in McKinney, Texas. They are doing mail order right now at Carpe Diem Comics Online.Square.Site. See? I can actually read it off there and point at it here. Technology. It's like a teleprompter, only analog. Um, do support your local comic shops. Do support your local hobby shops. These guys don't have massive corporate backup, and the COVID virus is considered an act of God, so retail insurance doesn't cover it, okay? Even if you can just, like, throw a couple of bucks their way now and then, get the word out, because if enough people throw a couple of bucks their way, it's the same way I do past the hat shows. If, a few, more, than enough, if more than a few people throw a couple of bucks their way on a fairly regular basis, then you suddenly have a business model. It's true. When all this blows over, we are all going to just storm our local shops and go, Ah! Buy! Sell me things! All right. Uh, if you want to listen to some of the weirder stuff that I've recorded that doesn't have video attached to it, SoundCloud.com slash Matthew Uh I have a few things out there, and um, I'm working on some others. There's uh, Reaver Johnny Reaver, which is a traditional uh, Serenity spacefaring sea shanty. Warning. There's a too soon moment in it. Um, there's a couple other things, including 30 to 50 feral hogs. There's an overwhelming surplus, an overwhelming surplus of diggity. There's, I got no pants. There's a lot of stuff on there, but check it out. It's all audio. So that's all kind of fun and cool. And thank you guys very much for listening in, sitting in with me again. Um, tell your friends, the more of this I do, the better I'm going to get. This is my, effectively my way of hanging out with y'all and throwing some music your way and telling you some stories you may hopefully you haven't heard. Um, if you have stories that you'd like me to tell and you know who you are, drop me a note and I'll see if I can make a note to remember to do it. Uh, if you have stories you do not want me to tell, then, uh, well, you saw... Where is it? It's in here somewhere. You saw my uh, tip jar, right? You the tip jar? Yeah, that's so, you know, I take bribes. I take bribes. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Thanks for hanging out with me again. We'll do this again tomorrow. Um, we'll probably keep doing this until we get to go back to work in our respective buildings, at which point I'll try and do it on a different basis. I might try to do it on Twitch or what have you. We'll see. We'll see. You guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Y'all take care.